Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 22nd of March with me Patrick Munley. Despite a dovish FOMC meeting, the key takeaway from the event was a comment uh, that the Fed had left the long end of the US Treasury market unprotected. The subsequent spike in the US 10-year yields to 1.75% certainly proved that point and fears of a disorderly sell-off in Treasuries still stalked the FX market. On that subject, FX markets will be starting this new week, nervous about US Treasuries once again, and the Fed has decided not to extend the US Treasury exemption to the supplementary leverage ratio. The US data calendar over the coming week is relatively limited. February personal income data will not repeat the bounce of January, but should surge in March as the $1,400 stimulus checks hit bank accounts. We'll also see a lot of Fed speakers, including Fed Chair Powell, testifying on Tuesday and Wednesday, alongside Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. The DXY remains supported largely by the sluggish rollout of vaccines and new lockdowns in Europe. Remember that European FX has a 77% weight in the DXY, but arguably DXY should have done better given the 70 basis point rise in US 10-year yields this year, and the fact that it hasn't does continue to lend weight to the preferred bearish stance in terms of the dollar. From a technical perspective, the dollar index held resistance at the 92 level again on the closing basis, although we did uh, trade through there on Friday but closed back below. As this 92.16 area continues to act as resistance, I'm looking at least for a test of the monthly pivot down to 90.73 and monthly projected range support at 90.60 through here and we could be back down testing the psychological 90 level. At this stage only a close through 92.54 would open a test of the yearly pivot up to 94.11. Europe's handling of the COVID-19 crisis certainly seems to be taking its toll on the euro. Third waves now look like a reality for the likes of France, the Netherlands and Italy, triggering fresh lockdowns and delaying the day when Europe can play its part in the global recovery. The slow rollout of vaccines and safety concerns over the AstraZeneca vaccine clearly have not helped either. Moving to the calendar this week, on Monday, the focus will be on how much the ECB increased its pet bond buying. An increase in net weekly buying to above the 20 billion euro would be seen as a sizable and could provide some support to European debt markets and perhaps even slow the rise in US yields. Data-wise, the highlights will be the first look at March PMIs for the large European economies and the German IFO reports. Let's see whether any optimism in the lagging services PMI starts to come through. We'll also see a host of ECB speakers. News that parts of Europe are heading back into lockdown did weigh on the euro into the back end of last week. But again, we have held this 118.85 uh, support zone. As we do, I'm looking for prices to extend higher to test the monthly pivot 120.85 and monthly range resistance at 120.124. At this stage, only a loss of the monthly range support at 118.24 would see prices extend lower to test the yearly pivot down to 117.25. It will be a busy week on the data front in the UK next week, uh, but after the March BOE meeting uh, last week where the central bank did not lean against higher bond yields, these should have limited impact on sterling. March CPI on Wednesday is set to increase modestly, but we'll need to wait until April to see more meaningful jump in prices. The January unemployment rate on Tuesday should remain stable, and March service PMIs on Wednesday should move back to expansionary territory, but February retail sales on Friday are expected to only partially recover after January's sharp fall. Overall, the UK data releases this week should be no real game changer for sterling. Uh, Sterling continues to trade above the 138 support area as this level uh, continues to attract buyers. I'm looking for prices to extend 
back up to 140.50 en route to a retest of the price cycle highs at 142.39 and ultimately on towards the 144 target. At this stage, only a loss of that uh, 137.50 trendline support area would concern the bullish thesis and see prices extending back down to retest support to 134.85. Neither the dollar yen nor Japanese rates markets moved much on the BOJ's policy review, which it seems was aimed at more flexibility. More flexibility in JGB yields at plus or minus 25 basis points around 0%, though the BOJ claims this was unchanged. More flexibility in stock buying, no longer a target, and now purchasing ETFs on the broader topics. And more flexibility to cut rates, changes made on its three tier reserve ratio exemptions. Perhaps the balance was about right, such that the market did not jump to the conclusion that the BOJ was ready to normalize policy. Expect dollar yen to continue to trade off US yields for the time being, though again expect to hear survey reports of Japanese lifers increasing hedged foreign bond portfolios and reducing unhedged uh, foreign portfolio bond weightings. On the subject of US yields, uh, market watchers point out that we will not see another round of long dated treasury supply until the second week of April. So whilst we hold resistance here at 109.30, I'm looking for a move uh, down to test support at 108. From this 108, I'm looking for a final extension up through into the target area of 110. And I think from there we can see a more meaningful correction develop where we could be back trading into the 107 area. But uh, the immediate focus is going to be on support at the 108 to target a move to the 110. Uh, the Aussie dollar saw a number of domestic inputs last week, which, however, left it trading not far from last Friday's closing levels amid a mixed global risk mood. The data flow has been mixed as well. A plunge in retail sales for February poured some cold water on the Aussie recovery story after some very strong employment figures that were released earlier in the week. Arguably, jobs data are more relevant to the Reserve Bank of Australia, and considering that employment is back to pre-pandemic levels, the risk of the RBA feeling the pressure to tweak their lower for longer stance is non-negligible, non really. It is still highly likely that the RBA will stick to its very dovish tone for as long as possible, considering how the bond market weakness remains a central concern for global central banks. Indeed, the big spillover of US yields into the Aussie bond market will still limit the ability of the RBA to keep the long-end yields capped, unless they opt for more drastic measures, such as extending the yield curve control to the 10-year tenor. In a yield curve control perspective on the three-year tenor, it will be worth keeping an eye on the November 2024 auction this week to gauge any significant uh, shift towards more hawkish views by the market. Otherwise, the Aussie calendar is pretty empty this week and the Aussie will remain solely driven by global risk factors. From a technical perspective, as the Aussie holds on to support at the 77 level, look for a move to test um, resistance up to the 79 area. A loss of the support at 77 would open a pretty quick retest of the 76 level. And if we don't find buyers there, then we can look for a test down to the 74. However, like I say, as we hold the 77, initially look for a move to test resistance at the 79 level. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for a week commencing the 22nd of March. As always, join me on Thursday for my live trade and market analysis session. And I wish you all a good week. Thanks very much.